Hello everyone, very good evening and welcome to another session of Telecom Analytics. And welcome to the CCTV TMG for the domain analytics session here. So today is the day of deep learning algorithm where we are discussing neural network. Right? So we know that a few things are black box techniques in machine learning where we don't understand what is happening in the back end but we only get to see the results so the advanced technique what we are going to study is here deep learning and this is called as black box technique. These are called as black box techniques because what, why it is called as black box? Because the math behind the scenes is not revealed. It is not revealed. So mathematical formula for few algorithms, like we have seen decision tree, we have seen entropy calculation for K and N, for linear regression, you have some math equations to be resolved. But it is a secret, it is kept as secret and it's not revealed. So hence the name black box technique. So the advantage is used using this. We are getting many things getting uh, you know sorted out, which are not possible algorithms. So we are putting this under the tag of deep learning. So where did this concept arrive? Okay, what is this? And what is that you are going to understand? So it's just like, you know, a mimic of human brain. So human brain has got so many neurons, right? And how each and every neuron works, right? How each and every neuron works. That functionality, when we try to collect the information which is passed through dendrites. These are your dendrites. Okay, you have the signals being processed here and these are the different signals being processed. And once the signals are being processed, it is reached to the body which is called as a cell body. So it's nothing but it is passed via dendrites your neuron cell and if they keep the signals are getting accumulated here in the cell body. Right, they are accumulated in our cell bodies. It's just like we always take one example that when you're having a cup of milk or a cup of coffee, you're able to withstand the heat of the cup. But as the time increases, maybe the cup is too hot, you cannot resist the heat, you will bear it for some time and you just spill it out. You just throw the cup down. So if I'm given a cup, my resistance power is different, your resistance power is different. Maybe I'll just throw it down at this point of time. So throwing it down is action point. Right? Throwing it down is an action point. So heat being generated, they are able to resist for some time. And the signal that is being given by the hand to the brain, it is getting filled or I can say loaded to the cell body. And the reaction is that different people, yes, different reactions, times you have here. So that output is coming through axon. That is coming through axon. So if we understand this with our concept, with our data, how it is going to happen, we have the cell bodies right so how the cell body is filled up these are your inputs
x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, these are the cell bodies. You run it. This is getting filled up, which is your cell body. Right? This is your output. This setup is called as a single perceptron. It is called as single perceptron. It is filled by the most of the signals here. And till this is not filled up, it will not go to this and output will not come. It will not get spilled out. So the point you have to understand here is the output will occur only when some threshold point is reached. The signal output will be there. Now, if you talk about the entire setup, it is less similar to your biological setup of your neuron which is very, very complex. The same concept of brain with a neuron will be used as artificial neural network. So the interconnections between the neurons, so this new, this setup to another setup, right? Among, to process the data, the point, how many interconnections are there among these, all this will make your architecture. So you don't call it as an algorithm on total, it is an architecture. So what is the entire world's population? I think it is very, very less when compared to the number of neurons. There is something called as more number of neurons, more number of interactions, more process happens. Right? That's the reason that people are behind saying that AI is going to be the future. So it is not possible for us now we are not getting many things get uh, automated things here so we are still in predictive analytics once the decision making happens with the machine then you call it as prescriptive analytics this is how the architecture looks like so all your inputs and this is your output layer so the point here is it is called as a hundred step rule it is a replication of the uh, you know, how do you replicate the code by one by one? The same way we are going to, here we are going to have the same way the neurons, you should follow the principles, you should follow uh, things. Remember many like data science, machine learning. So for any complex task is done, uh, you know, again and again, it will take, so much time but it will it is that you know there's a hundred step rule where any complex task will not take more than 100 neurons to perform but a but a human brain is made up of 85 billion neurons where we people are wasting all other neurons in our brain so it's only a hundred step rule you have 100 neurons you can work with that 100 neurons to learn to do analytics on telecom data so ANN, convolution neural networks and recurrent neural networks, these three here, where this is something which you, object detection, your self-driving cars, image captioning, right? RNN is for your text data, more advanced than your traditional language models, whatever you have built. So how does a perceptron, the setup, what I have just now drawn for you people, it is called as, it is called as one, particular uh, perceptron, okay? So a perceptron algorithm, it is nothing but inputs connected to a cell body and this is your output. X1, X2, X2. This is called as perceptron algorithm. But now how is the setup going to work here? So we have seen the regression equation, friends. The regression equation is something what you got here like you have y is equal to beta naught less beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3, so on and so forth like this. So these are nothing but coefficients or weights or parameters and regression equation. Yesterday we have understood. The same way all the neurons here which are being connected to this x1 input, x2 is input, x3 is input, these are the inputs you will have something called as bias. Like this is a beta naught. 
we have x4, we have this same equation now, x1, w1 plus x2, w2, x3, w3, x4, w4 plus bias, which is your y hat. Now the question is, how are these weights coming into picture? Right? The question is how these weights are coming into picture. These weights are something which are given by the algorithm and we don't know how these weights are assigned and what basis and what criteria they are going to get assigned here. Because of that reason, we are clueless when your algorithm would converge. The convergence time is different for different data sets and you don't know where the weights have been started off. So for that reason, what you do? This is nothing but these bias and what you're calling it as weights right or parameters right and you have the data like this x1 x2 x3 x4 and you have to predict your y this is how the data looks like and this is divided into integrator here this is the activation function. This is your integrator and this is your activation function. This is how it is going to work. And this setup is called as perceptron algorithm. So how the weights are being assigned? There is something called as gradient descent concept. So what is this gradient descent concept? The weights are initialized, the W1, W2, W3 are assigned in at one particular point. But where we don't know, it's just like going to the top of the mountain, closing your eyes and just through the ball. The ball may reach out to the ground in different paths. Right? Different paths. Right? It is going and reaching it to different paths. So how fast it is going to come and reach the ground that is where your algorithm will do the classification. Suppose you have to do a separation between stars and this. This is linearly separable. But how quickly it is going to draw a line to do the separation, how quickly you are going to reach for the classification, your algorithm will stop. If the weights are initialized here, you come down very, very quickly. If it starts here, you take a little bit more time to come down quickly to come to this point. In this scenario now, there's a concept called as learning rate, which will decide how quickly your algorithm has to converge, how quickly it is going to converge. So this is called as gradient descent algorithm. And this is something which is respect to the concept of It is a gradient descent algorithm and the concept is with respect to minimizing your cost function. It is minimizing your cost function. So how this activation function, this is nothing but now when, if your weights are starting from here, you don't know that W1, W2 are starting from here. They may come up quickly, they reach out here very, very quickly. If they start here, they come up down very quickly. So to come this down, and reach the convergence point, that process is called as gradient descent algorithm. So when you pass your data, the equation is something like this. Right? So you get something like 0 0.8. So with these weights are given by the algorithm. This is your input, input, your input, your input. This is a weight, this is a weight, this is a weight. This is a 0.8. So 0.8 is greater than or equal to zero, it will go to one class, less than or equal to zero, it will go to zero class. This is a defaulter, not defaulter. This is how classification is going to come. And this is going to give you the probabilities as output. Okay, now this is a 0.8, but in your original data, you have your Y already. You have your y already, right? This y is something 0.9 or something. So there is a mismatch between this and this, right? So you get some loss function. 
again you go for second data point third data point so you get errors error for a single data point is called as loss function for all the thousand data points you get thousand loss functions taking the average you call it as taking the average you call it as cost function so generally we say error function loss function cost function all mean the same but when it comes to neural network loss function is for one data point this is for many other data points so what is happened based on the cost function this is your network so you have your integrator and you have your output so based on this okay you got the loss output is there you got the loss function you go back and you update the weights this process is called as back propagation you go back and you update the weights what weights now earlier it was like bias w1 w2 w3 w4 w5 like this these weights are updated again you get the loss function you calculate the cost function if that is not up to the mark it has very huge error go back update the weights okay so within within one epoch it passes all the observations once it passes all the observations once okay it will calculate the cost function it will go back and it will update the weights it is called as one epoch every time you update the weights it is called as iteration iteration is nothing but every time you update the weights weight updation is called as iteration so this is the concept of your neural network so this perceptor and algorithm what you are talking is a single layer algorithm where you don't have much to uh, you know work with non linear patterns okay it is not good but now how these weights are getting updated as a concept of back propagation algorithm how these weights will get updated how these weights are getting updated is nothing but new weight is equal to old weight plus meta into actual value minus predicted value into input right so this is The, i may get a classification like this there is an error then i try to update my weight so that it will come like this once i update the weight so many times i get a straight line which is doing the best classification so this is nothing but old weight is equal to new weight into this this entire story will run behind something called as learning rate which should be very very low eta is a variable we call it as and learning rate is a key success how fast your weights should get updated if you say you want to get updated very very quickly it will just do uh, your rabbit steps jump like anything 1 2 3 4 5 right like if you want to update the weights very very quickly 1 2 3 it will take your rabbit steps if you give very very low learning rate if it is high this is going to happen if it is very very low it will take tortoise steps baby tortoise like this so it may take 2 minutes it will take 1 second to reach but if you see here here is a point where you have minimum error gradient descent problem you want to stop the algorithm here but you have given a very very huge error right? it is jumping so much that this error point is lost and you are again running okay now how these weights are coming up we don't know but weights will get updated based on the concept of back propagation concept old weight is equal to sorry plus this learning rate into actual value minus predicted value into input which is equal to new weight so when i did this suppose initially these are the weights given and i got a straight line like this the separator is a straight line if you see this went into red class if this is a red class and this is a blue class one blue data point went into red data point it is an error 
I want to correct it. So how do I calculate? For this, the learning rate is defined as one by three, and the weights assigned is zero comma one. What is my old weight? Zero. What is learning rate? One by three. What was the actual value? It was class one. Zero. It was zero class. You predicted as class one. This is predicted value. This is actual value. Is one into for, for which input you are calculating actual value minus one for this particular input. That input is minus one half. So this is a new weight. One by three. For y also, for one by two also, you can calculate. Okay, that is one. Right? New weight, old weight, plus one by three. Actual value minus predicted value, one by two. Right? I am going to get five by six. Okay, these are my new weights. Again, what will I do? I go and update the weights. The slanting, the sleeping line became a little bit slanting line. Right? This became a little bit slanting line. Again, I got new weights. Again, I calculate old weight. Let's learning rate into actually zero class minus one class for minus one. You got one more weight. Again, old plus learning rate, actual value minus predicted value into input half. So this is minus one and half. For minus one, I got a weight two by three. For half, I got a weight two by three. So this. When I pass these weights and I pass to the network, I got this. This is a perfect classification. Suppose this has not happened. This happened like this also. Again, I go and update the weights. So how many times I go and update the weights? All the observations are being passed means it is one epoch. If you are updating weights only one time, it is called as one iteration. That's all the story of neural networks. But what is going to happen here is when people started. Working with linear patterns was absolutely fine. It was going very, very good. But the point was when it was like uh, you know non-linear patterns, right? Like whether it's a quadratic expression or you know you need to do some things like uh, non-linear patterns means like this. Right, like this. So all the circles are here. This is this one. So it's called as a spherical. Something spherical is going to work here. Right. So what is this? This is going to happen here. What is this happening here? Your normal multi uh, normal perceptron algorithm will not work. So people gave two options for us: either you change this, you change into not a summation, change into an integrator, change into a quadratic expression, change into a logarithmic expression or spherical expression. You can change it, but there is another option they have chosen that is adding more and more hidden layers to your architecture. And they called it as they called it as multi-layer perceptron. So earlier it was like only one input, only one neuron like this. Now these inputs are connected to many other neurons. These neurons are again connected to many other neurons, and only have the output. The output will spill out the probabilities. Right. If at all you are predicting a numerical value, your output will have only one neuron. If you are predicting a binary classifier, output should have two neurons. If you have more than two categories, the output is having that many. N categories are there in your data, and 
neurons. Okay, and categories are there and neurons. Okay, so this is something which is very, very important. So multilayer perceptron is a feed forward network and this is called as you are feeding it and every neuron is connected to every other neuron in the next layer. So it is called as a dense network like this, right? So number of hidden layers that are placed in between this and this. So number of hidden layers you want, it is your choice. What should be your learning rate? Your choice. Number of neurons in each hidden layer. Number of neurons in each hidden layer. That is also your choice. What activation functions you want to use? That is also your choice. Right? So what is about these activation functions? Activation functions are those you know, where you know the neuron should be activated. So the output of that circle, the cell body output here, that should go to this. This is your F. If that well, F value is greater than one, if you use a step function as activation function, the output will be one, sorry, ramp function, right? If, if F is greater than zero, if F is greater than zero, A of F is equal to one. Otherwise it is zero. F is greater than one, zero to one, F is less than zero. So if, if the value falls in between, if the cell body value falls in between zero and two, okay? It is zero and one. So if it is point two, output also will be point two point. So if at all you are doing binary scenario, sigmoid activation function will hold good. Like this bunch of activation functions are there where out of which Relu is something which is used for image data. Tan H you can use for numeric data categorical. This is for binary classification. So every activation function is used to introduce. Uh, if at all some nonlinearity is there in the output of your neuron. So what is that you should understand now how this error surface looks like. This is how your error surface is going to look like. Okay. And the gradient descent algorithm I was talking was this. So how quickly your weights will drop to this point, which is the convergence point. How quickly they are going to converge. Right? So you want them to converge very, very quickly. This is how, because you don't know what is the path it is going to take where the weights have been initialized. Let us understand this concept using ANN. How do you build a model and you know, how do you run the code? How do you build an architecture here and all that? So here, many activation functions are there out of which I have used 15 are more famous for machine learning rather than all, okay? Here, I'm using Pandas, Matplotlib and Label Encoder, okay? I'm using a telecom data set where I have gender, whether a senior citizen, partner, dependents, tenure, phone service, streaming TV, monthly charges. But I have a column which is a person is going to move away from my network or not. Okay, so I have done some processing here, which is identifying the duplicates and the sum of the duplicates are 27. Right? Some of the duplicates, I would like to drop remove these duplicates and also drop these two columns. Already I have dropped them, so this would pop up an error. And all other categorical columns, I'm converting them into this and I'm performing minimax scalar that is normalization on my numeric data. Okay, this is how it looks. So all the data will form in one particular value that is minimum and the maximum value happens to be same.
ओके सो नो व्हाट विल हैव टू डू आई जस्ट स्प्लिट माय डेटा एंड आई एम सेपरेटिंग माय एक्स एंड वाई ओके नाउ दिस इज माय वाई आई हैव जीरो एंड वन ओके आई एम स्प्लिटिंग माय डेटा इनटू सेवेंटी थर्टी रेशियो हियर so there are few pre processing steps you should understand here is that you now whenever you are trying to we have a different uh, all together mind map okay when you are working with neural networks here we are working with multi layer okay when it is a perceptron algorithm this is what we have understood output being continuous output being categorical okay right? this is your back propagation these are the various uh, variants here okay so what is that we are trying to do here is when you have your inputs right the weights what have being assigned they are decimal numbers float okay they are float so what am i doing is i am selecting the data and i am converting everything into float input output Try X test. Thirty percent is test. I'm converting them into float because the weights which are being assigned by the algorithm, they are decimal numbers. Then I'm converting the same for my output column also. Okay. Now what is that? It happens is there are few steps which have to do. We have the values pertaining to it in different ways, right? So what you can do is. this is not required here and output column is white rain and white is this is this holds good only for image data this is not required for us for understanding purpose i have written that so np underscore utils to categorical y underscore train and np underscore utils to categorical y underscore test it means that i am converting the output one hot encoding is done for the train and test data sets If you see here, it's a two-class problem: churn or not churn. So I have written it. Shape is equal to one. I have taken it as two. Now I am designing my algorithm architecture. The name I have given here: define, design, MLP, and it is a sequential. Okay, number of inputs I have they are eighteen. So first I have eighteen. Is eighteen are connected to one fifty neurons? these 150 neurons are connected to 200 neurons these 200 are connected to another 150 and finally you have output so output will have only two neurons here number of classes yes class or no class so i am using this is your choice i have used tan h tan h tan h but output is a sigmoid activation function here okay and there is something called as optimizers which you need to understand there are different types of optimizers how you want to add weights or update your weights one of the observation is chosen randomly you pass it through the network and you calculate loss function you go and update the weights or you create your data into batches each batch for each batch 1000 data points are there 1000 by 100 Ten batches. Each batch has ten data point, a hundred data points. For every hundred data points, you go and update the weights. Choice is yours. Which optimizer do you want to choose? Like mini batch stochastic gradient descent, batch gradient descent optimizer, stochastic gradient descent optimizer, mini batch stochastic gradient. But here optimizer is Adam I have used, and the loss I am calculating is categorical cross entropy. I am turning the model. this is my model i have defined it now i am just putting calling that particular function in model and i fitted my data x is equal to x train y is equal to y train 
I said batch size is equal to thousand. So this part is the design. Now what changes you can do your design? You can change this. What is this dense? Sequential means one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. What is add? You are adding 150 to 200, 200 to 150 again, 500 again, the output layer. Okay. Now, what is this epoch? Just now you are discussing about epoch. Epoch is nothing but all the observations are passed through the network one time. So what is the network I have built here? I have built here. This is the architecture I have built. So my architecture is something like this. This is my 18, 18 to 150, 150 to 200, 200 to 150. Then it is output. This is my input. Now you can play around with this. You cannot touch this one and you cannot touch this one. You can play around with tan H or ReLU, whatever you want, you can give here. This is my design and this line is compiled and this is fitting the model. I said epochs is equal to 20, bash size is equal to 1000. I think 7000 data points I have. Right? So each epoch, eight, with every batch is having how many? 7000 divided by 7. seven. You divide into seven batches here. So for every batch, it will go and update the weights. If you observe here, I have given epochs is equal to 20. Taking the loss function, going back and updating the weight should happen 20 times. If you observe, there is an increase in the accuracy. If you have gone to 82 for 20 epochs. So still, if you at all you want to increase the number of epochs, it is your choice. You can come here. I've just commented this line. Remove this and add this. Run the model. Let's see how it's going to work. It is a good thing or a bad thing. Okay, taking your model now and I'm evaluating it, X test, Y test, verbose is equal to one. So verbose is equal to one, verbose is equal to zero, means a detailed explanation like this. 30% of the data points, this is the loss function. Based on this loss function only, it will go back and it will update the weights. And this is the accuracy on the test data. This is the accuracy on the train data. If I just evaluate it, you can see 83. And here I'm taking Y train, Y test. Okay, both are equal. If you want to improve the accuracy of the model, you have to go here, improve the epochs or change here something, change your optimizer, change your activation functions or add a new layer here. All these are something which you tune your parameters to get the best model, best accuracy. So dense is something that is that you are connecting all this 18 to this 150. Because it is neurons, I cannot draw that many neurons. Okay, this is again connected. So this is called as dense. If you leave in between few, then you can call it as a drop. Okay, so the accuracy of the model is this much. Now what you can play around here, increase three epochs, run your model. Okay, since we run everything. We did not run from here, I think. So this is TensorFlow as TF. I'm just using dense. I did not use this. So for this, what you have to do is 
you you have to install tensorflow and keras okay you can also change this right into binary cross entropy okay design your model some mismatches happen okay and when loss function in binary underscore see here Eighty-four. Okay, you can improve it. Twenty-five. It might increase. It might decrease. See, it is reaching to hundred percent. So it is not acceptable, right? Your model somewhere, some biased situation is going to happen here. So we can restrict ourselves to twenty epochs. it is running from this point only so we have to go back here run from here what is your x is your y design it Pretty. Here eighty two, it is eighty six actually. You evaluate it. It's eighty two. This is on the train data I'm evaluating. It is eighty two point three five one. Okay, this is the accuracies what we get. Okay, this is your neural networks. pertaining to telecom data set now if you want to see the data this is the data the person would churn or he would not churn given that his details whether what is the gender what is the senior citizen or not what is the partnership or his dependent or not what is his tenure Right. What is a phone surface? And what are the things you can change according to your wish? How are the weights initialized? You cannot touch. But what is that you can do? You can only take the data, change the number of hidden layers. So I can build a model here by changing. I can add this one more layer. I can do design. Right. Run the model. I'll fit the model. it's a good choice it's increased one more hidden layer more and more hidden layers will definitely improve your model and this is going to increase the performance in the time it is going to take right so you are designing your own own architecture right this is something you know it does automatic feature extraction we are not Bothered like yesterday, we have seen that we need R square, adjusted R square, p values. Here it is not required; it is automatic extraction of features, right? But what is fixed? Here you have input as eighteen columns. These are eighteen columns you have. Okay, these eighteen columns. If you see here, the input dimension I have given here. There is eighteen, so you cannot touch this. If I give nineteen or twenty, it should throw me error because it is not taking that. What only only thing you can change is these neurons. What you have, and this also you cannot change because it's a two class problem, it's a ten class problem, or it's a one class problem. It is a numeric prediction. Okay, this you cannot touch. This activation function is also sigmoid. If you observe here, 
because it will spill out probabilities as output sigmoid can take any value between 0 to 1 that's what is given as a part of your activation functions here sigmoid is something if you see there are no negative values accepted here they take only values which are positive okay these values are positive in the sense that probability values are the output so it gives out probability probability value can never be negative this is what we have used tan h so whatever you 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 can do it and if you see here you can also do model dot summary of this works see here These many weights are being calculated 150, 200, 150, 500, and output is 2. So, this is the output. We have density 12, means I have run how many times my data? This is the third time I am running. And this is how it is going to give it is 12. Why? Because I have run this model three times. So, the shape is this. 150 connected to 200, 200 to 150, 500 to. And these are nothing but weights which are being calculated at every instance here. Okay. So it is going to predict perfectly. Right? When you are when you are going to give any new data, given a person's details like this, right? How many dependents are there? Phone services there or not? The payment method, streamline, uh, streaming the television or not? Right? Does he need a tech support or not? All these things will be checked and will be given. So this is your artificial neural network. Weights. At something which will revolve round the story here. So, what are the things you have understood here? We have understood what is gradient descent algorithm. Gradient descent algorithm is something which is working only to bring down the error. And that is called as getting reaching to the minima point, that is local minima point. First order optimization algorithm the main motive of gradient descent is this back propagation is that going and going back and updating weights making them work properly update in such a way that you get very very less loss function this iteration will run 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 till you get the best accuracy so any complex task is done again and again and this is only the procedure and this is how it is going to work so we have understood what is a perceptron algorithm what are the flaws in perceptron algorithm what is multi-layer perceptron multi-layer perceptron is something where you have multiple hidden layers now in our in our model all these whatever we have built are the hidden layers only these are hidden layers only Okay, you can add one more also. One more dense layer can be added with a different activation function you can choose. Right? So this is how it is going to work. So thank you all so much for joining in and this is our neural networks concept. For the data set to predict the churn or a person is not going to churn. Given the details and with an accuracy of 85 when you understood how did you build a architecture and how people are trying to do the mimic of a human brain thank you all thank you once again